All right, I think we can get started. Can everyone hear me all right? Just doing a quick check just to make sure. Yes, great, thank you, Alessia. Okay, so hey everyone, welcome back to another session. Uh, if you don't know me already by now, my name is Latara. I'm the talk manager for this year's Rust Lab, all virtual. Uh, I'll be facilitating the sessions and helping out with Q&A after the video. Uh, of course, for those of you who have already been to the last few sessions, you know that we want the Q&A, the questions to go into the Q&A box. If you look at the chat box, next to the room chat circle, you'll see another circle with the question mark icon. Let's have our questions directed towards that chat just to keep things organized. Uh, all right, so we're going to see a talk by Tommaso Alevi called Write HTTP APIs. Uh, I'll quickly read his introduction and the abstract, and then we'll go ahead and start with the video. So, uh, Tommaso Alevi's background is about PHP and Node.js. Uh, as he admits, he's not an expert of Rust, but as a Rust newbie, he wants to share his experience with other people. Uh, so, from scratch, he'll help us build a simple HTTP API on a web server testing, documenting, and packaging it. Uh, they will, uh, he will help you co code the classic hello world for seeing which tools are available on crates for um, web server, documenting your API using Open API 3, and uh, containerize your APA into Docker image. So during the lockdown, Tommaso built a project. He wanted to create a website where the users can find uh, little shops that deliver to home. And the first implementation was made in Node.js for simplicity, but then the performance became a problem when the number of shops had grown. So he completely rewrote the server in Rust for that. All right, so here we go with the video. Everyone enjoy, stay tuned until the end of the video. We're actually going to have a five minute break about halfway through. And so uh, if you see it pause, you can go and get a drink of water and then come back. All right, enjoy. Hi, I am Tommaso and today we will see how to write a simple HTTP APIs. Before starting, I would like to introduce myself. I am Senior Tech Leader at EMEA Platform and those are my public social links. Today, what we will see? A simple setup Arctic Web project. We will see how to, sum, to, to add some logics for building a simple Hello World example, test it, documenting our API using OpenAPI specification, and dockerize our project. Why Attix Web? Because, uh, first of all, it's run with stable Rust version, it's very fast, according with uh, many benchmarks, you can find them online. It's uh, easy to use, as uh, we will see. It's testable, and uh, on GitHub you can find a lot of examples, and those examples are tested. This is not common for a, a framework, and I like it for uh, uh, those reasons. So, let's start to see how to set up the project. Our project um, is uh, built uh, using uh, one file for, for time being. In the incipit, we can find the include of our framework. Those lines describe a simple HTTP handle. 
In this example, uh, the function is named uh, index and return HTTP response. Uh, index returns uh, HTTP response with uh, 200 status code and uh, a JSON has body with uh, say hi. Those lines instead contains the main code uh, in which we can find the factory. This is because uh, Arctic Web runs uh, on uh, many threads and uh, for each thread this function factory is called. For uh, test purpose I introduced a macro get up that uh, create our app Desc un uh, describing uh, uh, which resources and which uh, uh, method uh, should be handled uh, and which handle is defined. Uh, we can use this macro in the test too. We will see them uh, Later, after describing uh, our factory, we'll, be, we'll bind the, uh, at this address, run and away. So, let's start with cargo run. Okay, so at this address, the server return say hi. This is the uh, log um, and that's it. We, we, we can continue. Our hello world is provided by two components. The first is a, a method say that accept a string uh, who and return the, uh, another string for saying hi who. And the HTTP router uh, in get on the root that accept name has query parameter and response say hi. This is our hello world example. So let's code it and obviously test. First of all, we have to define <coughs> our module. We can call it printer. Okay. Uh, we can add our structor printer and implement printer for adding uh, our method. Okay, we can use uh, format uh, uh, macro for helping us to return our say. Format returns a reference of string, not a string, so we have to convert it uh, using to own method. Now we can test our class. Uh, say should return, return the correct say let printer printer ok we can create a variable uh, printer let uh, who tom to own 
let actual printer we can now we invoke say with two parameter let expect expected should high tom and we can assert that those are equal so actual expected okay now we can test it cargo test now we have defined uh, other test in main uh, that fails uh, we will see uh, later and uh, this is uh, our test has uh, uh, developed now uh, we can uh, add uh, other tests for example we can handle better empty string if the input is empty string we can uh, expect uh, this uh, string no, without the space so uh, say should return without space on empty ok now again uh, run test and uh, our test fail for the space so let's fix it we can use uh, uh, match who to as str we can avoid these completely and the default behavior can be this so rerun the test and our test pass so uh, now we can uh, create, uh, pass and use our printer uh, instance into uh, index uh, uh, handler. For this uh, we have uh, to create uh, a printer uh, in the main, so you printer printer let printer printer ok and uh, share the same instance to all our uh, process this means that we have to uh, protect our variable uh, using uh, a single uh, reference counter arc and uh, read write lock so import it then okay now let print there arc new read write lock new later now we add it to our um, application and use here we have uh, to invoke clone method because uh, we cannot share the same instance of arc but uh, we 
have to clone ARC incrementing our reference counter and use the same instance in printer. Uh, now our tests uh, are failing, obviously, because uh, uh, GetUp accept a, a new identifi identifier and uh, here is not defined. So let's fix it and uh, we will uh, use in uh, our handler. Okay, now we can use printer in the handle. We have to define as parameter, so printer Okay, now we can access to printer Now we always return say Tom, hi Tom. So our test one is failing because we don't handle correctly the default value, but with the query parameter, uh, yes, because in this test the query parameter is exactly Tom. Now we can uh, ready, we, we are ready to say our test. Our test is made in this way. Uh, defining uh, the app dependency, using a test in service for creating a new application. Uh, this is why here we have used the and defined macros before. This is uh, a, um, for building a new request and uh, call it. And this is the expected status code, okay? And uh, those lines for uh, <coughs> um, for extrapolated, uh, extrapolating uh, uh, response body, and the last is the assertion. This is our failing test because uh, uh, on empty string, uh, who we expecting to have hello world uh, as response, and this is our passing test where our query parameter is who with Tom. Now we can handle uh, our query parameter correctly and for, for this we have to define a new structure. So, hello world query who option Uh, this structure has to be defined as the serializable, so use 
Serde Desagalizable Ok I don't remember Corrected. So, uh, query web query hello world query. We can access to who let query query punto into inner let who query punto who. Now we have to apply the default, so uh, unwrap for default, or maybe it's better unwrap or hold to hold. Now we can use this. Wow, now we have all test passes. It's a great thing. For uh, we, we can uh, add uh, another test uh, if we want uh, for uh, uh, knowing uh, what uh, will uh, uh, our uh, what uh, our application uh, da does. In this case, the expected is this. Cool. Now we can run a cargo. Localhost. OK. Tom, who nice now we can have a break. Bye. Da -da -de -dum. <laughs> it's very, very catchy. Um, yes, so we'll have a five minute break, everyone, and then we'll do the second half. So, talk to you then.
API. Now we are ready to describe our APIs. We will use OpenAPI specification because it's a standard and allow us to list our API defining for request and response some parameters, for example, query parameters, either and response body. Why it's important describing our API? Because unknown APIs is very difficult to describe to other people. We are building our web server for a reason, maybe because it should be live in some ecosystem. For that purpose, OpenAPI specification allows us to tell other people what and how uh, our web server works. Another reason because unknown APIs are very very difficult to maintain. There are two ways. Generating uh, uh, your code from OpenAPI specification and the inverse way. I suggest you to don't generate your code from OpenAPI specification, but the inverse way is a good approach instead. So we will use struct to swagger create to help us to generate OpenAPI specification from our code. So let's start. First of all, we can go to create.io and follow the instruction. Copy past four lines. Okay. And see what we have, uh, what we'll uh, do. Create a Swagger object defining the our web server name, the version, and use Swagger add uh, router macro in order to add a, a, an API. The second um, parameter is the method. The third one is the path. Then uh, the query parameters uh, structure. 200 is the expected status code in this case. Some description and the body response. As we can see, we have to define a structure for the response body. Instead, now our handler use JSON macro for defining the response body. So, first of all, we have to create a new structure. with uh, only one uh, member, like this. Derive has a serialize because Actis Web need to serialize it to the client and use it here. Okay, let's run test. <coughs> cool. Now we are ready to define our documentation. We don't want a return string, but uh, swagger object directly. Okay. We can change the name my Rust web server, the version, and 
uh, describe our API here. Adding to our structure swag derive, derive here, as the documentation suggests. Ok. Now we can use uh, get open API spec function in our main here and pass it to get up. Here. Okay. And uh, our test fail. So, let's re re rework this part. Get test up. Okay. Here. Okay. Now we can use this line in all our tests. Ok, now we can use this line in all our tests. Ok. Cool. Now we can add our handler for serving the documentation. For that purpose we can define a new re uh, resource under doc and create a new function, new handler, doc. Ok. Here, swagger web data swagger object let swagger swagger punto dot into ok http response ok dot json swagger Nice. So we can test it. Actually, we don't want to test the response body, but uh, only the root uh, exists and does not return uh, 404, 404, for example. Lock. And Ok, cargo test, cool, 
cargo run ok nice hello world hi tom hi and doc this is our spec as you can see my rust web server this is the version the editor allows us to see uh, there is a get on root api that accept who parameter that is not uh, uh, required and return uh, choose 00 with description say in application json content type this schema where say is mandatory string wow nice so let's start to dockerize it we want to dockerize our project so docker build meno meno no cache dot I already prepared docker file the docker file is structured into phase the build phase and the runtime the first allow us to compile in, in a, uh, a way in an optimized way uh, our dependencies and uh, our code so as you can see first of all we copy cargo tom and cargo lock file and make a fake uh, main this allow us to compile only our dependency docker is uh, able to cache those stages the cache man is it's maintained up till tom or lock uh, changes after that we want to remove some in, in intermedial uh, build copy our code and build the final release the second part instead allow us to uh, create a very light uh, image and uh, run our build, our release. In this way we can cache our dependencies and even if we change our code the first step are cached and only this second build are run by docker so uh, we have to wait uh, a while more or less uh, five or four minutes more or less because uh, this is the heavy part of uh, rust compiling Sorry, we have to wait uh, for a while, more or less. Okay almost done mm. 
maybe Okay. Oh, four minutes. We have to cash it, uh, obviously. Now, this is the second uh, uh, compilation compile that takes only 14 seconds. So, we can run this image. Tom, who, and our dog. Nice. So, let's see what happened when we change the port. Like, uh, for example, this. We should rebuild The, um, the image but uh, as we can see the build the build stage that build on the dependency is cached and uh, docker uh, see that uh, copy or code is uh, is not in cache so copy the or file run again the build but this build only our code ok so high world Nice. Here we are. Those are my my some uh, some links that help me to create this talk. So I I suggest you if you want uh, to see them. And uh, this is all. Hi. I am Thomas Allevi and uh, this is the last uh, slides. Bye! I really do have that jingle stuck in my head. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are ready to do our live Q and A with Tommaso. Uh, let me see. Maybe there was a uh, a problem for a moment with the uh, video. Sorry about that. Um, now, Tommaso, I cannot turn on your camera. Um, can you please check and see if everything is working? Um, the top right part there is the cog icon. Maybe you need to re-enable the video. Uh, can you do that please? Top right. Let's see here. Um, yes, I cannot activate your mic yet. We'll have to wait. Sorry everyone for the technical problems. Uh, earlier, of course, this is a live event, but uh, as for all things, 
technic technology can be a little uh, wonky sometimes. So at the moment, we are trying to get to Mazo's. Ah, there we are. Okay. I can turn on your camera. Hi. Hello. Welcome back to Mazo. <laughs> Thank you so much for that video. Um, and just for everyone who is wondering, Tomazo is in the office right now, so that's why he must wear a mask. Good job keeping everyone safe. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to ask if anyone had any questions for Tomazo. And while you guys are writing that, I will just uh, say to you, Tomazo, very much um, thank you for your contribution to Rest Lab. And also, if there's anything else you wanted to say about uh, what you what you talked about or your participation in Rest Lab, this is my first uh, Rust Lab uh, conf. Um, I'm not a Rust expert, as you can see in, in the code is not uh, written well, absolutely not. Uh, but uh, I have so seen uh, maybe Julio uh, ask for uh, uh, I don't. Uh, yes, Julio um, asked earlier, is Actix ready for production today? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, from my point of view, Rust uh, is uh, not so uh, production ready yet. It's uh, a quite uh, new technology. So I used uh, it uh, in some circumstance, but uh, not uh, so critical. Mm. Uh, I like it uh, and I want uh, to some to, to make it production ready, but the, there is uh, only one way to do that. Uh, use it. Uh, if people don't use it, uh, Rust uh, don't um, will not uh, Rust uh, will not my, uh, production ready ever. Mm -hmm. Very uh, true. So uh, from my point of view, uh, yes, uh, is not so ready, but uh, is not uh, a, a joke. Uh, I have to maintain uh, and uh, write code uh, every day, uh, a lot of projects. Uh, and uh, in some circumstances, I choose uh, Rust for a reason. And uh, I, I send uh, my Rust code to production. This is make it uh, production ready. I don't know. Uh, I do it. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit crazy. But uh, 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 as I said before, there is only way to make it uh, production ready. Send it to production. Yes, yes, <laughs> of course, we need that. Thank you. All right, so uh, one last thing from Arif. Uh, he says, any words on a comparison between Actix and other servers such as Rocket? I used Rocket uh, only once, uh, but uh, uh, I don't like it. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, maybe I use it uh, uh, not so recent, uh, and uh, uh, Rocket needs uh, to use uh, to to run uh, on uh, uh, nightly version, last version. For, so for that uh, reason, I haven't chosen uh, Rocket framework. Another reason is because uh, uh, I use the uh, uh, VRK and uh, Autocannon has a benchmark tool. Um, I, uh, uh, in some context, uh, uh, Rocket uh, has some problems uh, with uh, socket management, uh, TCP socket management. Uh, so I prefer to not use it, uh, but uh, um, I, maybe I use uh, an old, very old uh, Rocket version. Um, this is not uh, a, I, I'm not an expert, uh, as I said before. 
All right. Uh, well, thank you for that. We have another question coming in from Marco. He says, uh, what are the main problems you find on rewriting the code in Rust for your application? Uh, for example, missing useful libraries and so on. Uh, the knowledge uh, for the first, for the principal uh, problem um, of Rust, uh, Rust in itself, uh, uh, I'm not a Rust developer. Uh, I I play with it uh, and I like it, uh, and uh, I want to uh, to be a better Rust developer. Um, so first of all, uh, uh, the porting uh, make me sad uh, because the ownership uh, is the principal problem. The first, uh, the, the POC, the POC version was written in Node, where the ownership uh, is not so strictly uh, checked. Um, instead, uh, Rust uh, forces you to think uh, about that uh, kind of things. Uh, it, for this reason, uh, the first uh, problem uh, is that. All right. Uh, my uh, the the my uh, my web server uh, should make uh, some HTTP uh, request, uh, parse, uh, um, uh, calculate something, uh, something like that. So uh, there there was not a web server that make uh, a lot of things. It's very very simple. Mm -hmm. I suggest you to start with those things uh, because it, it's simply. It's more simple. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. I think that was our last question here. Yes, uh, the last one was just from Julio responding to you answering. All right, so if that's it, if that's the last question for today, I want to thank all of you and of course, Tommaso as well. Thank you for coming. And uh, we hope to see you maybe in the next edition of Rust Lab, hopefully live in person. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. All right. So we have uh, our next talk coming at 3 p.m. So I just want to remind everyone that if you liked this talk by Tommaso, you can rate it on the agenda page on the site. Um, so our last talk for the day is going to be from 3 to 4. That's going to be um, called Transistor, a bitemporal database client with Julia, Naomi, and Ottavio Paolino. So uh, we'll be waiting for you there in the next room at 3 p.m. All right. Take care, everyone. See you then.